Hello again. Um, as promised, I'm going to do an inbox review. Uh, Trumpeter, uh, Mr. Smith BF109 E3, 132nd scale. Um, a total 274 plastic pieces. Um, as you probably know, this, I think there's photo etch in this one as well, so there's obviously some more bits on top of that. Um, we have kit number for those that uh, need it. Um, sorry, the light's uh, burning it out a bit. We've got 02288 on there. Now I think you get three schemes by the looks of things. We've got one of the reasons I bought it was for the Swiss uh, scheme. I thought it'd be something a bit different. Uh, we've got this one here uh, BF109E white 13, um, September 1940. And I think we've got this one, which I think is quite a common one. I've seen this on many schemes here with a sort of yellow nose. Um, again, it's a 1940, um, but it's a nice scheme, uh, you know, it's a good camo scheme. Okay, uh, one of the things with Trumpet too, which is always nice, you get a nice solid box, so you're not mucking around uh, with a flimsy box, you get some of these Revel kits here going, I'm just push this up a little bit, so I think we're at the widest angle, so you can get a full view, there we go, that's better. Uh, so anyway, without me waffling on too much, let's crack open the box. Oh, sorry, there was something else I stored in there. <coughs> we'll start with the instructions. So, what's nice, first off, is you get a really big uh, full colour sheet here. Um, A3, maybe. Um, certainly bigger than A4. Um, obviously, the main scheme they give you here is this sort of traditional E3 scheme, I suppose. Or quite a common one most manufacturers seem to do. Um, and it's with, obviously with the yellow nose. Um, colour call out we've got here, which again is nicer with um, the trumpeted kit. So we've got here Mr. Hobby, uh, Vallejo, Model Masters, Tamiya, and Humbrol. Although interestingly, they're showing Ta Humbrol doesn't have a lot of the matching colours, which I think is probably unlikely. Um, and obviously, Mr. Hobby seems to be the only one that matches everything. Um, Anyway, unfortunately, I think these Vallejo numbers are in the uh, not the model air. I think these numbers are for the actual um, model color, but I'm sure that you know, on the internet you'll be able to you know, cross reference those, no problem. And of course, they've got the RML numbers here as well, so you should have no trouble matching up your colors. Uh, we've then got two more um, another one here with yellow nose and slightly. You know, not quite such. Uh, I personally don't think this is such a good scheme. You've got the sort of mocking, which makes it more interesting. And then we've got this nice um, Swiss, very red, very white. Um, possibly the one I'm going to do just for a different bit of difference, really. Um, I think it'll make a you know nice, interesting uh, uh, build. So that's the colour scheme. Then we go into the instructions here. Let me zoom in a tiny bit here. Let's bring this down. Mm. So the lights and lighting's not brilliant tonight. Um, so it's fairly standard, you know, read before assembly, tools required. Um, it shows you the sort of legend of the, you know, what's been, file, decal, etc, etc, cement, usual um, stuff. We've then got um, parts map. Um, looks like we actually use most of the parts. Um, there's not a lot of unused parts. They list the unused parts here. We have got uh, photo etch. We've got tyres, I think the, this, they were rubber, I did check that, um, but we'll come across that, and clear parts, etc. Um, pretty much a standard format, we're going to start with the cockpit. Um, if I had to have a criticism of this kit, uh, sorry, of this instruction book, it's probably a bit busy for one section, it might be nice if they you know, broke it down a little more. Um, one thing I have read is this piece here. Um, uh, what's the part number? Uh, it's actually two parts, E49 and E33. You shouldn't use them. Chuck them away. They're not really for an E-Series uh, 109. Um, it's for where the model of the G, where you had um, the cannon through the nose coming into the cockpit. Um, so this is inaccurate on this particular kit. Um, I think there is something else that's inaccurate, but I can't remember what it was, but that's quite a glaring uh, mistake by all accounts. Um, we then go to the engine. Um, it looks pretty good, fairly detailed. 
Um, the kit goes together then, you find the bolting everything together. Seems reminiscent of the um, Airfix 124th, I seem to remember. It went together much like that. This one you've kind of got the radio compartment. I think this is this part here. Um, then you've got the machine gun, oh, sorry, the cans. Although, interesting enough, you're not actually going to see them because there's no opening on the top here. Um, although they give you, I noticed in the um, parts, I had a very, very quick look at the parts, I've not opened any yet. Um, underneath the bulge, they give you clear parts, so you could leave that clear. I'm not quite sure why you would, because you're still really not going to see an awful lot, but there you go. Um, make up the tyres, wheels, obviously usual, so there you go a bit here. Flaps are separate, so they can be posed. Uh, put the wheels together here, various uh, PE parts, which is nice. Uh, you've then got your tanks, fuel tanks or bomb option here. We're then putting, actually in stage six, we start finally getting the uh, fuselage holes together. You've got a sort of plate to go in here to give you some details. And again, you've got various photo etch parts there. Um, more radio type parts by the looks of things here. Tail wheel. And then the main fitting together. And then we've got all the sort of extra bits here. So we've got the cover. How well this goes on with the engine, I guess, remains to be seen. Um, although I believe it does. Um, clear parts. Now, again, one of the criticisms that I've read up on is this is too big. But um, how easy that's going to be to correct, I don't know. We'll have to see when we build the kit. Um, then we've got this cooler underneath. Uh, again, there's some criticisms here for its size and shape um, and apparently for the spinner caps here. Um, but again, we'll have to see. As I say, for me, if it looks good, looks like a one and I, I'm not that fussy. Um, again, I don't know if you, there's probably not much you can do here. The, here, maybe you could replace these. Um, I've certainly got some head art 109s in my uh, stash and I know that you often don't use all these caps so um, maybe the other one's better you could replace that um, things like that maybe to try and make it better and the whole thing just goes together um, at the end there so and you get the PE for the sort of aerial wire which is which is nice again much like the, the, the head art I think so that's good that's um crack on with some of the parts here. In fact, that's first up here we've got some rubber tyres. Um, I'm not going to open them out the back because I end up losing them. Um, they, you know, they're they rubber tyres at the end of the day. Love them or hate them. Um, they look okay. You know, they've got tread pattern. Not much to be said really to be honest. Let's start it on this piece. This is the wing part. Okay, <clears throat> well first up um, we can see it seems to be flash free, it's quite nice quality plastic. We've got um, nice fine, I don't know how you can see that, recessed panel lines and recessed rivets. Um, it all looks to be nice, nice clean plastic. Now, doesn't seem to be any sink marks or anything particularly unpleasant there. I don't know how well you can see that in the light. The detail is nice on there, as I say, nice uh, recessed and, um, panel lines and rivets. That's good. Good, good start. Let's get some of these bigger pieces out of the way first. Okay, again, it doesn't appear to be any um, unsightly sink marks or any flash on the kit parts, which is good. Again, we've got nice looking uh, recessed panel lines, not too deep. 
Um, I think there's a lot of these are going to need a really good wash. I think there's been a quite a lot of mold release agent on there. It's quite shiny, a bit yeah. Um, obviously, we've got the inspection hatch here, so we can display the radio if we want to. Um, yeah, I mean it all looks pretty good there. And there's no injection, horrible injection pin marks. You've got the ribbon inside here, which is good. Yeah, nice. The dust look. I don't know if it's me. I don't know, my shape here doesn't look quite right, but maybe that's just my imagination. I try to remember the Eddard kit that I've not long completed. I guess once it's together, we shall see. Let's part back. This is various bits and bobs here. Okay, we've got the side walls here. Um, again, for a standard plastic kit, they're pretty good. There's a reasonable amount of detail on there, which is nice. Again, we don't seem to have any flash or an unsightly sink marks or rivets anywhere. Uh, sorry, um, inject, uh, injection pin marks anywhere. I think most of these aren't going to be visible because they're two parts stick together. All the little parts are clean. A slight flash there, maybe, but it is so minute it won't clean up very easily. Again, it's all got nice fine rivet details here. Don't know if you can see that, but they're all good. Yep, another nice screw. Oh, I get all these parts up here. Um, so we've got three spinner options here. Uh, they look like spinner ca caps to me. Um, again, they've got fine recess and rivets. They look okay. Can't see much wrong with that. Oh, sorry. Make sure they're in shot so you can actually see them. Would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yep, that's good. Okay, so again, this bit's kind of got your bombs, your fuel tanks, your propeller blades. Um, it all looks pretty good. Again, we don't appear to have any flash on there. There's a bit, some injection pin marks here that will need to be taken care of, although the wheel will hide most of them. They're not too deep though, it shouldn't be a, too much of a drama. Other than that, looks pretty good to me. Last bag, plastic anyway. This is all the sort of little bits and bobs really. <clears throat> so we've got the engine parts here. In fact, most of this looks to be the engine components here. Um, and we've got a large quantity of tiny little bits pieces the actual um, exhaust um, pipes and actually nice there as you see they're hollowed ends they're one piece so no seam lines really to speak of so they're actually nice nicely done um, reasonable amount of detail in the engine again for a plastic kit I don't think you've got too much complaints there if you did want to show it open um, you might not want to include it, you might just want to shut it, box it up and not bother, but um, the options are there, which is nice. I'm going to put these back in the bag so we don't lose any bits here. And then finally, uh, this looks to mainly to be interior parts. Um, you've got the seat, fairly basic seat there, the radio equipment here. And just various bits and pieces. Instrument panel is quite nice. I think this actually has a decal. Um, but obviously if you didn't want to use a decal. Um, but to be honest, there's probably a dial photo etch out there. Um, if not, you could probably, uh, yeah, you can buy some photo etch or something like that. Or you can, a bit of careful painting, I think you could probably do quite a nice job of that. Again, no 
no real issues there. The machine guns themselves are quite nice actually. Again here, how you can see it, they've got hollowed ends, which is good. As uh, was a bonus, it says you're trying to um, hollow them out with a, a drill. Column looks a bit short from what I remember from the Eddard kit, but maybe that's right. But other than that, yeah, no, that's uh, again, that's a nice, uh, nice sprue. Uh, let's have a look at the clear parts. Um, let's see what we've got going on here. One. Okay. I mean, the nice thing about how well you can see that they're very shiny, very clear, nice, not too thick. The scale, they look nice, but again, I can see why people were concerned about the size of this. The shape looks slightly odd. Um, it's a shame I haven't got some of the, I've got some spare Eddard bits from the kit I produced, and you'd see it, this the sort of tapers out wider at this end, and it's a little, looks a little odd. Um, if I've got some spare Eddard ones, I may look to replace that if I can, because it just doesn't look quite right. But we'll see. I mean, again, if it fits the, the, the body of the kit okay, and it looks okay on the, when the finished model, I'm not too bothered. But if obviously the fit is an issue, then we'll have to look at doing something with it. But nice parts, nice clear, you know, crisp, and you know, they don't distort too much, so they're quite good. <coughs> Maybe the answer is to leave the cockpit open. <laughs> okay, then the last little bits here. <coughs> Got <coughs> oh. uh, these, are, as I mentioned, the sort of under the gun, uh, under the wing gun bulges, whatever the ter technical term is. Uh, I'm not going to bother opening these. They're clear parts, a bit pointless, I think, in my mind. I, I just put them on and paint them, but they're, they're there if you wanted to try and display the gun, but I mean it's underneath, most people are not going to be picking up your model and looking underneath, are they, let's be honest. So that's those. Oh, we've got a sheet of photo etch, now when I first picked this up, sorry excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold, um, I thought to myself, God this must be two or three sheets because it's quite heavy, um, but I think it's actually only one, let's take a look here and see what we've got. It is only one, it's I'm not really an expert on trumpeter kits, I've only ever built one other. Um, it's typical trumpeter, trumpeter really, I suppose. You know, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with them. Um, you know, you've got seat belts, which is nice. You've got these various grills and bits and bobs. Um, but it's thick. It's quite thick. Compared to the Eddard um, photo itch, this is quite thick. Um, you'd almost need to try and, I don't know, maybe heat it to try and sort of flex it up a bit um, but um, you know it's nice to have that in the kit out, out of you know without having to pay a lot of money for extras so that's it's definitely a welcome addition I'm sure it'll be good last of all the decals um, I had no problems with my previous trumpeted kit any other one I've done the decals were fine I don't believe they're cast graph but um, nevertheless that was, was a good they were good. What's nice, obviously, is they're well protected. You know, you can't uh, not trump it for that. They've got, they're in a plastic bag, they've got sheets on them as well. Um, so at least you're not going to start off with damaged uh, decals, which is always good. So we've got our main sheet here. Um, yes, we do have an uh, instrument panel, which is okay. Um, the first thing I'll say is they're very glossy. The other thing I'll say is it doesn't seem to be the thinnish. There doesn't seem to be a lot of carrier film, which is good. So I think they're going to be pretty. Um, they're going to be pretty good decals, actually. You've got your swastikas in two parts, so you can make them up. Um, I don't know how well you can see that. I'll bring it a bit closer. It looks like you can read all the writing, the small stenciling, which is good. So the light is. It's quite reflective. It's quite glossy. Nice, nice deco sheet. That looks good. Um, the colours perhaps aren't quite as vibrant as some of the, you know, you look at the, again, unfortunately I'm comparing it to the Eddards because I've not long built that one. Um, 
and these colours are a bit, I don't want to say wishy-washy, but they're not quite as vibrant perhaps as the others. But then, you know, maybe that's not such a bad thing, perhaps if anything, the other ones are too bright, I don't know. I guess that just uh, depends on your preference. They look like they're going to go down well anyway. <coughs> and then we've got the, these are the Swedish, uh, sorry, the Swiss. Again, unfortunately this one has actually been slightly damaged here. Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue, but again, they look pretty good. Um, I mean, you may choose to mask and paint yourself. I guess it depends on on your preference. And again, I just guess it depends to some extent how well the decals can form. You know, if you use a bit of Microset, Microsol, or some other softener, and these really do conform down nicely, um, they can actually look pretty good. Uh, you might not need to paint, but you know, like most things, that's that's you know, your decision, I guess. Um, but they look pretty good. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it. Um, quite looking forward to this build. Um, I will be building this one hopefully fairly soon, um, so I'll give you an update on, on how I get on. Alright, cheers, thanks for watching.